Now that George Russell will be joining Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes for next year, it's the first time since 2017 we'll see an all-new driver lineup at the Brackley team. With a stellar junior career and many superb performances for Williams in F1 so far, it was a no-brainer for Mercedes to choose George Russell for, as Hamilton's teammate for 2022 and beyond. Mercedes have now put themselves in line with Red Bull, Ferrari and McLaren by placing their main junior star as one of their works drivers. And I don't think anyone disagrees it was the correct decision for the long term. But in the short term, going up against Hamilton and having to cope with all the pressure, the question everyone is asking is how will George Russell cope? Will he sink and fall into Lewis's shadow much like Valtteri, his predecessor? Or will he rise above that and prove himself to be a title contender against Lewis, showing he is indeed the real deal? To answer that question, I'm going to start by looking at his junior career, his record in spec series, as that can tell us a lot about the driver's true ability and underlying speed. GP3 and F2 are the two main spec series on the ladder up to F1, and George Russell won both as a rookie, much like Charles Leclerc did. His F2 season was the real teller that he's something special, beating the likes of Lando Norris and Alexander Albon quite comfortably to seal quite a dominant championship. Looking at his pace advantage over those guys, he had a good two to three tenths at least on them, which shows just how fast he really is. And it's no surprise to see him overperforming in that Williams this year and in the past. People would point to the fact that there have been many drivers who have dominated F2 or other junior categories and gone on to F1 and been quite lacklustre, Stoffel van Dorn being the prime example. However, there's a big difference between dominating F2 in your third or fourth year than being a rookie and doing it. Jumping into a new category, into a car you don't fully understand with tyres you don't fully understand either, at a disadvantage to most of your competition, yet blowing them out of the water is what sets people like Charles Leclerc and George Russell apart from the likes of Stoffel van Dorn. If you think about it, the new rules coming in for next year kind of makes F1 like a brand new category. No one would have driven the cars or any car like that before. The tyres are completely changing as well. So it's no different to really going into F2 or GP3 as a rookie. And clearly, as George has proven in the past, it's something he copes very well with. Judging him by his F1 performances is a lot trickier, since the Williams cars have been rubbish since he's joined F1, and he hasn't had any experienced teammates that we can benchmark him against. Someone like Lando Norris, on the other hand, was in a competitive McLaren up against an experienced driver in Carlos Sainz. So we have a good idea of where Lando stands in the driver pecking order. Same can't be said for George. Luckily though, we do have that one performance for Mercedes in Sakir against Valtteri Bottas. Although it was only one race at one track, there are still a few things we can pick up. Primarily, it's his ability to adapt to new situations quickly. In a car he was not physically comfortable in, he said he had to wear smaller shoes, he didn't quite reach the pedals, etc, etc. He was still able to perform at a very high level, probably not too far off his best. Although he was narrowly out-qualified, in the race he was far more impressive. He got his elbows out at turn 1 and led for 59 laps, managing a good 2-3 to three second gap to Valtteri. It wasn't the same level of comfort that Lewis has on pace against Bottas, but still he showed he was at least as fast as VB, but was also critically willing to get his elbows out in wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat, which is probably Bottas' biggest downfall. So now I've spoken about why Russell may succeed and do very well alongside someone like Lewis, it's now time to talk about the other side, why it might be a bit tougher going to Lewis's team and being competitive straight away. As I've said already, Russell's pace advantage over Bottas in Sakir was not as big as the pace advantage Lewis has had over Bottas in recent times. In Sakir, in those 59 laps that Russell and Bottas spent in clear air 1 and 2, Russell was just under a tenth of a second quicker after correcting for track length. 
Lewis, on the other hand, in 2020, was just under three tenths quicker than Bottas. And in 2021, it's just under four tenths. So if that's the true pace gap between Hamilton and Russell, it doesn't bode well for Russell for the immediate future. And he'll probably start on the back foot. However, that is assuming that Russell was performing at his very best in Sake, which is probably not the case. There's probably a little bit more time to find. So I don't expect the pace gap to be that big. Although we can't really find out anything about Russell's true pace level from his teammates at Williams, we can get a better picture of his true pace by looking at his junior career and the drivers he faced, Alex Albon being a very good benchmark since he was teammates with Max Verstappen. George Russell was 0.375 quicker than Albon in F2, and Max Verstappen as teammates in F1 was almost 0.6 quicker, again after correcting for track length. Whilst it's likely that Alex would have got closer to Max as he gained more experience in the team and in F1, it's likely that that pace difference between them would have been a bit larger by one or two tenths than the pace difference between George and Alex in F2. So you're probably wondering, why is this relevant? Max and Lewis aren't the same driver. George is going to Mercedes to partner Hamilton. He's not going to Red Bull to partner Max. Well, it ties in with what I said about Lewis and George and their pace differences to Bottas, that same one to two tenths difference. So if indeed George is one to two tenths off Lewis, that's fine because Lewis is the one with all the experience and all the titles. So walking into his team and being quicker is not expected. And to be his teammate and learn from his data is what George needs to do to become a better driver. And hence, when Lewis is gone, be in a position to lead the team forward. To round things off, I've seen in the past few weeks a lot of people, I don't want to say overrate, because George deserves plaudits for his performances, especially that lap in Spa that was majestic. But the expectations for him, I feel, are getting a bit too high. A lot of people expect him to just walk into the team and be a match for Hamilton, give him a run for his money and challenge him for the world championship. When in reality, that's extremely unrealistic going to a seven-time world champions team and to be a match for him straight out of the blocks is very unlikely. We need to manage those expectations. If you cast your minds back to 2017 when VB was announced as Lewis's teammate, there were a few people, not as many as there are now for George, but there were a few people who thought that Bottas would come in and challenge Lewis straight away and cause those fireworks he had with Rosberg, but that wasn't the case at all. And no matter what Bottas has done since then, no matter how good he's been, anything he's done has been a disappointment for them. So we can't let ourselves do the same with George Russell. We can't put him in a position such that no matter how well he performs alongside Lewis, that it's a disappointment. We need to manage those expectations and be realistic about what he's going to achieve alongside Hamilton in the near future. Of course, I'm not saying he's going to end up as the wingman, but don't be surprised to see him not at that world championship level straight away. So that is it for my take on what George Russell can bring to Mercedes and whether or not he can challenge or beat Lewis to the title or just in the points next year. Let me know what you think will happen at Mercedes next year. Can George really be a serious threat to Hamilton? Let me know in the comments. Please make sure to like and subscribe and share the video to all your mates. That will be much appreciated. And until next time, take care.